So to combat that, the atmospheric dispersion corrector has Ooh, save that son of a bitch. Hello YouTube, it's been a while. Here in probably the last month or so, there's been a lot of people who have asked about the ADC and a tutorial on how to use it. I shot the video uh, and then it kind of got lost in the background with all the Big Ben stuff. But enjoy watching the tutorial. We'll come back into Registex and I can show you some examples of how it looks with the color correction and all that. So enjoy past me. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Scope's out. Computer's out. Humidity's out. It is 9.45 at night. And I'm sweating. Because this is South Texas. And it's humid. Hashtag humid AF. So right now as you can see I got Jupiter on the screen. And if you look on the right and the left. You'll notice the blue limb and the red limb. So what we're talking about today is an atmospheric dispersion corrector which is this little fancy piece right here so when planets are lower on the horizon when the visible light comes in the blue and the red will separate anyway to combat this the atmospheric dispersion corrector or ADC as we'll call it from now on uh, has two prisms inside that when adjusted with these levers will realign the red and blue channels and help you get rid of the fringing let's dive into it shall we so as you can see we got the Crafer focuser zwo atmospheric dispersion corrector the two times power mate and then the asi 462 mc so first things first you will have a bubble level the bubble needs to be level and what i like to do is turn it towards just past level and that'll give me a little bit of extra time you have the set screw right here is your baseline point so what you'll do now is you'll adjust these two screws equally apart so you can see the back one has a slot going that way and the forward one has a slot coming around here you can see the blue and red bands on the on the planet and with the planet in full screen you don't want to be zoomed too far in because what's going to happen is is whenever you start adjusting these prisms the image on the screen is going to move so what you want to do is you want to do it a little bit at a time and then readjust the planet visually inspect can it be done better eh, maybe a little bit so we'll do it again visually inspect that's pretty good looks like all the red is gone maybe a little bit of blue left we'll try to go to the first notch was which is the halfway point looks like I'm gonna push it too far so we'll go back just a hair man it's hot shit and bugs so if you look on fire capture, you have this little uh, ADC tool. Uh, so that'll give you an estimation of what it looks like. But just me visually looking at the planet, that's pretty good. I mean, you can sit here and fine tune it all night long and you might get it you know, a little bit better, all that. But I mean, to me, it's good enough. I don't used to see a sweat dripping down my face. We'll go ahead and get us a capture. Now, the thing to remember is, is that the ADC isn't the be-all, end-all 
as far as color correcting goes because in Registax you still have the RGB align feature which will in theory you know do pretty much the same thing the ADC does the ADC just does it during capture theoretically results in better data overall man these mosquitoes are bad and welcome back uh, it's still hot outside but I'm not outside I'm in the air conditioning so I looked all over the place and I couldn't find the data for that Jupiter that night so what I do is I have uh, some recent Jupiter and Saturn images and some of them have the color banding even with the atmospheric dispersion corrector and so we'll go into Registax and you can see how to correct it even further in post you can see here we got a Saturn image opened up from the 26th of July so we'll just throw a little some quick wavelets on here so if you look on the top part of Saturn we have the blue fringe and on the bottom part of Saturn we have the red fringe so in order to fix that in post you will come to the RGB align just make that box bigger than the planet and so what it'll do is if you remember your graphs in school the X position will a positive number will move it to the right negative number will move it to the left Y is positive up negative down so you can either do that manually but why would you do that you put the box around it and just click estimate and it'll do it itself and just like that no more blue no more red and you can see all of the changes it made and like I said that was even with the ADC and it was still and it still had color fringing which is why I said in the video that just because you have the ADC if you don't have it set right you're still gonna have the color fringing no matter what so since I don't have the Jupiter from that night I have the Jupiter that I shot uh, last Tuesday morning which also has the red on the left and the blue on the right so we have that opened up right now we got some adjustments done to it again we have the box all lined out and I think it's worth mentioning that when you have a big planet that you're trying to align whether it's Saturn or Jupiter um, Jupiter especially if you capture a moon of Jupiter you can RGB align on that moon and it will do this it'll do the same thing a whole lot faster you don't have to select the whole planet and everything so what I've done is I've processed the image uh, everything is exactly the same one image is with RGB align one image is without RGB align uh, it's the same data set and everything and it was taken with the ADC which I think is very important to remember so if you look on the left hand side you'll see the before and if you look on the right hand side you'll see after the RGB align so make sure you're doing the RGB align in Registax really not sure what else to go over if you have a Newtonian telescope then almost everything uh, in this tutorial will apply to you except the level I believe your level has to be turned either sideways left or sideways right but don't quote me on that because I haven't used it on a Dobsonian but I do know that it's turned sideways other than that sorry this took so long been a lot of stuff going on uh, you know life whatever anyway I mean I guess there's probably other tutorials I can do right like I'm sure people don't even comment on YouTube videos anymore but if there is other tutorials you'd like to see in regards to you know planetary image processing just you know leave those things down there in the comments and give that old, that old subscribe and that old like and all kind of crap you know you can even share to your other social media pages whatever anyway till next time see y'all later